In this video, we are going to install that tarp system right there. We installed it as a straight arm and found out that it was going to be covering too much of our bed uh, for loading. So we waited and did this video in a couple different parts. Um, and we ended up getting a 45 angle, which we didn't do on the single axle. So you'll find things in this tarp installation that we did not do in our other tarp video. So we are going to install a new tarp on this tandem. And we, we were using Carolina tarps again. I, we put uh, the Carolina tarp system on that F700 over there as well. And they come with brackets like this. It's kind of got a... Uh, funky finish on this side compared to this side. I don't know if you can see that, but that's the outside actually. Uh, my other one over there wasn't like that, but that doesn't bother me. Um, I didn't notice that right away. These front ones here are for if you have like the, um, the wind cover, the deflector cover. So we're probably gonna, and I'm probably gonna level it a little bit, I would think on this one. On the other one, I didn't, I just followed that cab guard, but this one's a little bit more of a different angle, so I think I'm gonna do it do it like that. So we're gonna figure out, I think I'm just gonna, where this seam is, I think I'm just gonna butt it up to that seam there. I think that gets the tarp enough forward. I think we'll clear this exhaust stack. And if we go too far forward, it might interfere with the door opening and closing the tarp arm that's gonna connect over to this. So I don't really wanna go too far forward. So I'm thinking we're gonna put it about right there. I think that makes sense. So we're gonna do some measurements and probably put some tape. I've got a C-clamp. It's the only one I can find, which is not great, but we're gonna do our best. C-clamp. And when I did my other dump truck, this here, I had flat with this. But again, I'm trying to conserve a little bit of height. Maybe I'm screwing myself. I don't think I am. There's still a lot of depth in here for it to wind up. I don't think it'll be a problem. But that tarp's only four foot longer than the single axle. I think this is a Good, we need to drill this 3 8 hole. So I'm going to go get the drill. And, uh, and we'll get that mounted. Those are both dead center. Now another way you can also, I mean, I've seen people use like a square 90 to align it, but you just need to make sure that it's height and it's length from the edge is the same on both sides. Um, otherwise, it may not line up from side to side on the pole. going to go to the other side we're going to take a measurement first on where we're at here and where we're at in depth and then we're going to use that measurement um, on the other side I'm going to run around real quick and I don't think I can get over this wall on this side no, this side doesn't have steps I'm going to try Now we might have to take this old one off. Uh, we'll see. I'm gonna probably I'm gonna take it off anyway. 
but I'd like to get this other one mounted first and then deal with that. Uh, we'll see what happens. The assumption this is this way, I guess. So the assumption is going to be something like that. Okay, so we got those drilled in. We're just going to Start screwing them in. Okay. So we now have both of those in. And you can kind of see what I mean by I think we're a little bent here. I think the corner's bent down. So that's why we won't be able to be per probably perfectly square, but did the best we could. The next thing we're going to do uh, to get it out of our way, we are going to disassemble the old motor. Okay, the next thing we have to do is we have to measure the distance across these two brackets. And then we have to subtract two inches. And that's going to be what we cut this spool at. So right here, I've got seven and a half feet. I'm sorry, seven, seven feet and a half of an inch. Okay, so we've measured the distance between that mount and the mount on the other side. Our measurement was seven foot and a half of an inch. And those plates are quarter inch, so we're gonna say seven foot. Instructions call for it to be cut <clears throat> two inches short. So this is uh, two inches short of seven feet. And I'm um, just gonna go ahead and plug this in first. that in there really tight to keep it straight you might also consider propping up the other end as well I will clean that up but it turned out pretty well I always like using the chop saw for that so then the next thing we have to do is we have to come in and uh, drill a new hole if you look at the other end you'll see that that there's a hole in it <clears throat> see that we've got to drill a new one of those we have our 3 8 bit these channels are kind of hard to get started in sometimes i've broken it i think i broke a bit when i did the f700 i've got this marked three quarter inch in from the end I used the one inch mark on my tape measure so I wouldn't have to play around with the end. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, so we got that shaft in here. We got this bolt put in. Um, <clears throat> I ended up cutting this a little too short. Um, the instruction said two inches less than what you measure from here to there. I took the inside measurement, um, but I don't think the instructions are wrong because we did the single axle perfect perfectly. I just think that this bed isn't square. You can kind of tell, I mean, it looks pretty straight, but you can kind of tell that corner that, that, that protector has been up. You can only do it so, you know, if you don't, if you're not working on a new bed or you've got some bending to your bed, there's going to be some like, see how that kind of looks crooked, even though we know it's straight for the, for that. Um, what I kind of tried to focus on is the, the, the depth in to make sure they are equal and attempt to try to get it to the right height. But you can't always, you know, if your cap protector is bent, you can't always, uh, count on the measurements. So, but I think it will operate just fine. We went ahead. These did not require washers. I'm pretty sure that was my doing. That's why I didn't do the others because I realized I'd run out of washers for the tarp if I if I did that. So uh, those probably didn't require washers. So double check the instructions there. These um, Allen screws are for the cover. They've got a little washer. Um, I just put those in there until I am ready to put the cover on. Overall, I think when I got it mounted, Besides the fact that I, I did cut that about a half inch too short, I think it looks pretty good. Um, there's about an equal distance. There's a little bit less distance over there, but again, that, that corner is bent up, so it kind of plays with the mind. So I'm just trying to kind of do it the best I can. The next thing we have to do is we have to measure where we want to put that um, tarp arm. So there's a they give you a couple different measurements in the book. Um, you're supposed to do the same measurement on both sides. Um, however, remember that side's not square. It's pointed up. Uh, you can see a chain binder right there. I've, I've been trying to kind of bend it down. Uh, it'll be okay even when I bend it down because the measurements there on that apparatus are the same as that. So I just know that's set in like an inch or two too high. So I want to bend that down. But uh, I wasn't able to get a good bend on it. So... Just remember in my instance that that corner is higher than that corner. So uh, I'm only using the correct side to measure and then I'll transfer it on the body. Um, so if you're working with a really square bed, you really should do the measurement on both sides. But I know that measurement will be off on this side if I use this side and I know I'm going to be bending that down. So I'm not going to. I'm not going to worry about doing both sides. I'm just going to do this side. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the measurement from here. The center. To, I'm probably going to center it. I'm probably going to hook it. And then I'm probably going to remove half of this diameter from the measurement. Because I only have one per, I'm only. I don't have anyone else to help me. So I'm going to hook it there. And then we're going to go measure. I'm probably I'm going to measure all the way to the back of here. Um, because I, I want to cover this with the tarp arm. So, uh, and you could go, and it's a preference, you could go wherever you want, but we're going to measure the whole length divided by two. I'm going to mark the bed, you know, here on the lip. We're going to take a level and we're going to, uh, bring it down to, to bring the measurement down to down there from, from marking it. So that's the plan. Um, and we're going to do the best we can with it. So I've decided that a level is not going to work because we're not on level ground to begin with. Um, so it would give us a real funky measurement. So um, we're going to take this approach. We're going to, I'm going to use the same thing here. I'm going to measure to this beam seam, which follows down. And then I'm going to measure along this rail. That's how I'm going to make my eight foot nine inches. Eight foot nine, 
minus 12 would be 7 foot 9, 7 foot 8. Okay, so we measured from there to there, and we are 17 foot 6. The halfway point is 8 foot 9. Um, what we're going to do, so I measured from there to this lip, and we're just going to transfer this lip down. So that's 13 inches from there to there so we're gonna measure seven foot eight and that will be our halfway point the book gives you quite a few ways you can measure you can do a diagonal where they meet the tape measures meet with the same it says you can measure and put it in uh, the halfway mark and use a level but I don't think I'm gonna be able to use a level because the trucks not level so I think it would give me a funky measurement so the way we did the other truck was I just kind of measured it and then used something I knew was straight on the truck, followed it down, and it's not perfect, but I think it will work. Uh, but the book gives you, the instruction book gives you quite a few different ways that you can accomplish measuring. Uh, but that, that's how I'm gonna do it in this instance. Okay, so I'm not, I don't have enough cord to get to the, the welder out here, so I have a Harbor Freight generator that I run. I went ahead and grinded where the sides are going to be. These say to bolt, it's easier for me to just tack it than it is for me to drill it and, and bolt it and get wrenches up behind here. I mean, it can be done. This is like right where it's setting is going to be right where a cross member is. We welded the um, we welded the single axle, so I'm going to do it with this as well. I already started this up because I didn't have a glove, so we're gonna start this back up. Clean that up a little bit, but uh, it's definitely not going anywhere. I decided to keep it just a little bit flat with that. I'll use it, do the same thing on the other side. Probably could have got a better finish if I cleaned up the plate a little bit, but um, I'm okay with that. I'll put some wire brush to it and we'll go ahead and get the other side done. We've got those welded on. We've raised the bed. We've put our springs in. And we've raised the bed because it needs to be in a rested position to get it up. And then you can see as you go up, it breaks tension, right? It puts tension on it. So I'm waiting on my two helpers to come. And what they're going to do is they're going to hold those uh, like level with this as I lower the bed. And then we're going to let it rest on the ground um, until we get it um, the rest of the way installed. So, uh, But that's uh, where we're at right now. And uh, we'll film here more in just a bit. These bars go inside these. And so you've got one on each side that you're using, right? And the third one goes across. Now in this instance, the third one is wide enough that I'm not gonna make any um, cuts to it. And these fit in there enough that I don't need to make any cuts to those. So we're not gonna be cutting any of those, but we need to drill them 
uh, about three quarters of an inch in from the inside so that the corner pieces can bolt in. So I'm going to go ahead and make those measurements and, uh, and get this um, going. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead, I think, I don't know which way I want to do it, that way, or, yeah, we'll do it that way. So we're gonna put a washer on it, a washer on it, and a lock nut. Got that one done we're gonna go ahead and go pick up the uh, tarp from the other shop and get the tarp on before we do the other side So we got the tarp uh, installed and it looks really good there, right? But when it's all the way up, which I'll show you, it, it cuts across and uh, like this, and it covers too much of the load area. So I ordered some 30 and 45 degree bins. I think we're gonna use the 40, 45. See, this is a fully retracted tarp and <clears throat> That's just not ideal. Arguably, that could have got uh, moved forward, okay, um, to where it did give you mo more of a this way, right? But we would have been in the way of the exhaust. So we're going to cut somewhere in this area, and we're going to put an, uh, um, a 90, like this way, okay? which is going to send that piece of the arm down and it's going to curve the extension arm and it's going to end up doing this. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, undo the tarp, tarp bar um, and then bring the pieces back down to the ground level so that we can work with, with that.
Let's see if we can get this to hook onto one of these. There we go. That is enough to at least grab it from the top. Take this with me. Okay, so that concludes the tarp installation. I'm going to run to Ace and get uh, a bolt for each of those empty holes there. I said they only sent me four, uh, and I actually bought four uh, angles. So they sent me one bolt for each angle, which is not typical of them. It was probably just a packaging error, but uh, it doesn't it doesn't matter. These bolts are so cheap. Um, I know if I called them, they'd send them right to me. That's just how they are. They're great to work with, but it's not even worth calling over a you know over a couple missing bolts that I can run three minutes to the store and get for twenty five cents. Um, not even worse wasting the mail carrier's time. So um, it was just odd because that's the first time I've ever been short bolts. Um, uh, we're going to add a board that goes across. Uh, there's a I, I could have made it a little bit different, I guess. Um, but I just kind of guessed as to the measurement and it worked out pretty good. I mean, it was way better than it is be was before. So I think it looks great. We're going to go, we'll go ahead and put it down. These are backwards. I just got to switch the wire around. And that's how it looks when it's all the way down. I'll have to play with my stops there. I think one of those might be on the stop. It is. See, it's supposed to be in between it where it sets down a little further like that one. So I'll have to go up there and play with those a little bit. But other than that, it's pretty good. Um, one thing I was afraid of is like with this having to be high, I was afraid that it would um, cause a situation where it was the high point on, my, on the truck. But it's not. So that's good. I guess maybe if you did even a bigger angle than a 45, it would. Which is probably why they don't sell them or I haven't seen them. But I think it turned out pretty good. So we're going to go uh, get this thing inspected and uh, start using it. Eventually we'll paint the, uh, the bed black and it'll look real sexy. All right, so I appreciate you turn, tuning in. If you liked the video, make sure you like and subscribe. And we'll continue bringing more videos of things we're doing on Homestead. Thanks.